Yeah. Hi. Hi. Are you okay? No. No. <laughs> I'm Claudia Conway. I'm 16. Um, my parents are high profile political figures. You need to stop reading your comments. Yeah. Push it aside. Because if not, you may not ever rise above. This is American Idol 2021, and this is the season of TikTok stars, or is it? In this week's recap show, we talk about Claudia Conway exposing what really happened on American Idol, our top three performances of the week, and the moment that had us saying, what the f Hi, I'm Samantha. I'm Rikanka. And welcome, welcome to, to the, the Tyler Recap, Recap show. show. You guys, it's the season 19 premiere of American Idol on Valentine's Day, and we were feeling the love for this episode because we saw some incredibly talented contestants. Who were some of your faves? So we had Benson, the amazing TikToker. We had Jason Warrior. Okay, if you guys don't know, he had a huge confrontation with Megan Trainor, who just, by the way, had a baby on the four and now he's back on american idol mm -hmm. there was also do you remember that girl with her overbearing father <laughs> yes. and it just it was cringe to watch the way he just yeah. walked off hard to forget her mm -hmm. and then we also had dj johnson who literally broke down on tv yeah. talking about her mom um, and her dad came in it was just this really emotional moment but i feel like the big big story here is that this season american idol is kind of like rebranding and they're just mm -hmm. very very um social media TikTok savvy. influences. Yeah. I think the fact that it's finally American Idol meeting Gen Z, where yeah. they're like, okay, we gotta go where our audience is. Mm -hmm. Yes, you're good on TikTok, but are you really a singer? Well, we, we did see two really, really big TikTokers in this episode. One of them has 1.7 million followers right now. I'm sure that number's gonna go up. Mm -hmm. Claudia Conway, we know her parents are very famous political figures, but in this episode, there was just a lot going on that made us believe that the producers were kind of like pushing her to talk about her family and not really focusing a lot on her singing mm -hmm. and I was looking at her TikTok and looking at her Instagram and she actually kind of exposed the show after her audition right so we saw in the audition her father came with her and her mother was there via video chat and during the audition Katy Perry was basically saying like you know, do your parents hug you? I know there's a lot going on at home, but you need to block out the noise. Does she it's still like, hug you? Well, the point is, is that she came here to sing and you're creating noise talking about her family. And I feel like Claudia watched this back on TV and realized that the producers were kind of manipulating it a bit. So much so that she went on TikTok and she basically exposed the show for just, you know, manipulating it to focus more on her parents and gain publicity. Correction, Katy Perry just said her mom. Because she actually, Katy Perry actually likes her dad. She only has issues with her mom. I, girl, these TikToks, after mm -hmm. looking at these TikToks, I don't know. Um, but Claudia posted a TikTok and she also posted an Instagram saying that she really didn't want her audition to air on TV. Um, she said, I really apologize for my audition. It was god awful. I promise I do not sound like that. She posted a caption on Instagram that said, I'm really not ready for this American Idol. Do you guys think you can make a last minute change and not air my audition? She, yeah. she was really bullied on TikTok. Like the, if you go to her TikTok and read the comments, her fans were really upset because they thought she wasn't good, which is really sad because first she's really young. And two, her second song, I thought she was good. Like, will she win American Idol? No. But was she good enough? Like, mm -hmm. yeah, for a teenager who's trying to sing, like, she's not bad. Well, the thing is that she said that the producers reached out to her to um, come and audition oh. for the show. So that already right there kind of makes you think maybe this is like something to get the show more viewership or something like that. She also said on TikTok, I didn't choose my makeup and I didn't choose my outfit. So that leads us to believe that the producers had a hand in that. Mm -hmm. And then she also said, there was a lot of pressure on me, especially since the producers made me talk about my family and I tried really hard not to cry. She also made another comment where she said the producer said, make sure to mention your parents 
And she also responded to a comment that was mentioning Katy Perry asking, do they hug you? Does she hug you? Like her mother, does her mother hug you? And she said, yeah. Um, she said, uh, no, like genuinely sent me into fight or flight mode. So right already, we can just tell that the producers are like up to something, you know? They brought in this big mm -hmm. TikTok star who has this famous family, whether you love them or you hate them. You know there, them. There's a story there. And they brought her here for the story. So if the producers are telling her what to wear, what makeup to wear, telling her mom to get on the camera and talk to her, telling her dad to come in and hug her, what else are the producers doing this season to kind of spice up the competition and get more viewership? I think maybe because of like everything that's going on, the last season of American Idol, which like did see the viewers go down. I think they're now grasping at the straws and trying to get everything to happen and see what clicks. Also, maybe with Claudia in particular, they had a story in mind. They and they wanted it to play that way. Because I mean, if you have two famous parents like Claudia does, as a producer, why would you not use it to get ratings? Because mm -hmm. like, even before American Idol aired, Talent Recap wrote about Claudia auditioning. Most uh, news channels wrote about Claudia auditioning and a lot of people tuned in just to see how Claudia would do. So I mean, if you, if you think about it from the producer side, like if you have something like that, why would you not use it? Do I feel bad for Claudia? Yes, I do. But I mean, this is reality TV. You signed up for it knowing all of that. Yeah. Also, we had TikToker Benson, who right. actu actually has a pretty good following himself. So I guess what we have to really see is, is it really translating to ratings? Are the Gen Z and the Gen X interested in what American Idol is finally serving them? Mm -hmm. And that raises another very, very important question. Can a TikToker win America's Got Talent? Girl, it's American Idol. Oh, see? I'm sorry. see? We're a little rusty here because we haven't seen American Idol since the beginning of the pandemic. Exactly. And that exactly. season was a little, you know, mm -hmm. anyway. So, can, can a TikToker win American Idol? Let us know down below in the comments. But I definitely think someone who is very popular on social media and TikTok can win American Idol. And there are a few contestants coming up in um, the next few episodes who also have pretty big followings on Instagram or Twitter or YouTube. So this is really the age of social media. And why not? Why not use that platform to your advantage get votes also uh you know promote your your work promote your audition why not why not do that but i guess what i'm trying to say is is it social media popularity now replacing real talent because think of kelly clarkson she wasn't this polished she wasn't this you know um instagram or TikTok person. She was just Kelly Clarkson and that's why we liked her because she was the girl next door that we wanted her to win. It's the Susan Boyle theory. So we're definitely gonna see if the people who are more like, you know, down to earth country and mm -hmm. uh, the people who are TikTok social media savvy, like which one of those is the, has the predominant voter block this season. So I guess I know, we're just- and I, I don't think they could be any different from each other. Right. Like. But let's see. Yeah, I mean, we'll have to wait until the mm -hmm. live shows to see which contestants make it to the live shows because we don't even know if, if someone like Claudia will make it past Hollywood week. But it, it's definitely interesting to think about. But speaking of talent, yeah. I feel like we just have to get into our top three um, performances of the week because there were so many amazing ones. So at number three, we have Mia Renee. I just feel bad that she walked in when like Katie was on the floor, which like, <laughs> yeah. come on. But I, okay, all jokes aside, her performance was amazing. I genuinely think that she's that powerhouse traditional singer, no frill, no, no excess happening, just came here to sing, did her thing, won hearts and left. Yeah, the judges were saying that she was like one of the best singers that mm -hmm. they've seen, like especially soulful singers. Right. And I just feel like her vocals were powerful. She had a great personality. She literally walked in while Katy Perry was laying on the floor and she had a great attitude about it. So that to me just mm -hmm. screams American Idol. But I think we should move on to number two, Annalie List. 
Um, so Anna Lee spoke about having Tourette's and she said that she was inspired by previous contestant James Durbin who also shared a story with Tourette's and you know aside from all of that like she she has this incredible story and she's inspiring so many people her voice oh my god oh I loved it so much I don't even know how to describe it it was just something that I want to close my eyes and listen to forever yeah that's the thing a lot of times it's like the sob story is so sad that you kind of, you know, feel bad for the person. Mm -hmm. But over here, if you just like chop off all the sob story and just listen to her song, you genuinely love it. And that's why like she's part of the number two here because yes, she has Tourette's, but that is, and that is a very important part of her story. But that again does not define her because and when she sings, it doesn't affect her, it magically goes away. Like it's her superpower, mm -hmm. which I just love. I think it's beautiful. But at number one, and I I think it was a unanimous decision we made. Yeah, of course. It's Grace Kinsler. Okay, first of all, not only is this girl just like drop dead gorgeous. Uh, oh my god. When she sang, and she sang two songs that we hear a lot on talent shows, like we gotta mm -hmm. be honest here. But like Katie said, sing, sing it, it like I've never heard the song before. Like and she did just that. Be. Exactly. And her vocals were incredible. Her range was incredible. And I just felt like I was at a Grace Kinsler concert. I, I love it and I mean shout out to you you Leo because like I mean you know Leo's own the stage they're known to just be powerful tigresses and when she came she came through also the fact that you know when she was singing and it wasn't like she it was almost like she didn't know how good she was because when she was performing even Katie was like wow I did not expect the performance to be so good mm -hmm. and I Somehow I have this thing where like she's like an underdog, but I want to root for her. And I really do think she'll make it far in the show. I don't know if she's an underdog. I think she's a front runner. Um, but mm -hmm. okay. <laughs> let us know down below who you guys thought was the top three performances of the week. And with that, ah. I feel like we got to get into the WTF moment. It's the moment that had us saying, what the f***? And for this week's WTF moment, it okay. had to be Mario Adrian. So this guy challenged Katy Perry to a walk-off because he's a model. But the twist here was he was wearing nothing but a little, <laughs> little tiny pair of striped underwear. I think the most funny part of his entire performance was the fact that the entire song he sang was about how I'm not just a pretty face. Uh, I'm super talented yeah. and people don't see beneath the surface. Mm. But his voice was so bad <laughs> that like, I was like, okay, man, listen, you're gorgeous. Please keep doing it, but do not sing again. People like me for my underwear. Never see my talent. This isn't fair. I mean, I, I, Okay, I like his personality, yeah. you know, and like like Katie said, you win at life, you just don't win a ticket to um, Hollywood, and I get it, like, he's the kind of person, the friend you want, but no, you can't sing. Mm. Well, at least he was pretty to look at, um, but we also had that, like, really weird moment where Katy Perry literally bought the jacket off of one contestant's oh back. God. But I want it. I, I, okay, first of all, I totally understand it, and for 400 bucks, it's <laughs> not bad. Are you for real about this? I'll do it. Seriously, really, we're doing, okay. Whoa, a deal has been struck on we're the oh set. Like you did, okay, so it was one pattern and then you did this, like oh, like you just made all the sequence go down and then it became black and white, which I think is so cool. And this also tells us like Katy Perry's dad, he is, he's got a different sense of style. And, <laughs> and, you know, whenever you see Katy Perry's videos, you're always wondering like, oh my God, it's eccentric, like where does she get it from? Like Her father. What there and, you go. Yeah, and I mean, sometimes I don't really love it, but then it's always very different. Yeah, I mean, some of the outfits she had in that episode yesterday, I don't know what that was about, but, uh, you know, the cow outfit. <laughs> but hey, you gotta say, she, this is almost three to four weeks after she gave right. birth. Let's give props to this woman for nailing it. She did the catwalk without, like, she is, uh, after... Oh, okay, first of all, I think a lot of guys don't know this, so let's tell you guys. Like, it's not like a balloon where, like, you know, women give birth and suddenly they go back to what <laughs> yeah. they were. 
So, I mean, the fact that she's still adjusting to her new body, but she owned it. Like, yes, am I, am I a super fan of all her outfits? No, but am I a super fan of her confidence to be able to be like, listen, I'm not going to wear anything boring. I'm going to wear all floral and sit in the judging. Like, she wasn't trying to blend in. She's like, I'm going to stand out with the body that I have as I'm learning to love it. Mm -hmm. And I'm excited to see what else she wears in this season because we know that this season is anything but conventional. Exactly. Um, and we can't wait until the next episode. But in the meantime, let everybody know where they can find you. It's Mridanka Chavla on Instagram. Where can they find you, Samantha? It's at SamanthaX373. And while you're on YouTube, you should hit the subscribe button and the notification bell. Follow Talent Recap on all social medias and head over to talentrecap.com because we have all the scoop on American Idol. And I think it's time for us to say, and, and that's, that's our Talent, talent recap. recap. Hey, what are you doing tonight? Well, I think you should hit that subscribe button down below and then we can talk. Oh,